Hello, this is Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting. Thank you so much for joining me today and welcome to the Stamp Around UK um, March, no, April video hop. I'm a month behind. I'm, I'm recording this in March, but it will actually be the 1st of April when this goes out to you. Can't believe it. It's not an April Fool's. Too late in the day anyway. This goes out at 6 p.m. UK time, so it's past April Fool's time. Anyway, this is my project for today. Our theme for this month is metallics. I hope you've been having fun clicking around some of the other links. They're all listed below this video. Um, and there are some amazing projects for you to see. So please just make a cup of tea, take your time and have a, have a, a session just sitting and watching all our videos. We all really appreciate all the views that we get. We appreciate even more all the comments we get or even more if people subscribe so if any of those things appeal to you please and you have time we'd love it if you could do if you could comment or you could subscribe to us it all helps um, us run our business we we bring those videos to you absolutely free but we do need to generate an income to keep doing this so that all helps our businesses so anyway we're going to make this card today we're going to make a very similar one made this for a golden wedding anniversary card that i needed um and I've used the, the wreath from um, Arranger Wreath. It's a wreath builder, the wreath builder dies that go with the Arranger Wreath set. They're great, these wreaths. They're lovely. You've got this one and you get another one that's more, more like that, sort of a leafy one. They're absolutely great. Um, I'm going to, I'm, this is another set that I'm not going to let go once it retires. I'm hoping it won't retire this time out of the catalogue, but who knows? Um, but I will be hanging on to it. And I've used some words from the well written, no, well said, um, stamp set to make my happy anniversary. I've used this, the, the 50th TH, um, comes from the family party set, which is this one, which actually I thought I would use more than I have. I've, I love this because I love making personalised cards. But I think because it says mother and father instead of mum, I think if it had said mum or dad, I might have used it more. Um, I just, I can't, I can't send an, an, uh, a card to my mum saying happy birthday mother. Um, and I don't know who would. So um, I suppose if you were doing Mother's Day, it might have been helpful. I don't know. Anyway, haven't used it as much as I thought I would, but I am just using that little TH there for my card today. And I might have a play with that set later on and see what I can come up with. And then I've used the playful alphabet to do my numbers in the middle there. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to make a silver anniversary card. So this was a golden 50th. I'm going to make a silver 25th anniversary card, but very, very similar design. So first of all, before we do anything, I'm going to do the die cutting. So I'm just going to move my grid sheet out of the way to bring in my die cutter. This won't fit through our little one, unfortunately, so I'm going to have to do it with my big die cutter. And it tends to um, bash my, my grid sheet, so I always move that out of the way. Great, great little die cutter, this. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I thought I loved my big shot until I had this stamping up machine. And now I don't know why I ever thought a big shot was great because this is absolutely fantastic. Now, because we're doing silver anniversary, I'm going to die cut the wreath in silver first of all. Like so, and you can see how easily that cuts out. So that's a perfect, it's dropped out of the die for a start. Lift that up. And you can see how it's just coming apart without any pressure at all. That's just all popping out. So it's so easy to use. And these little intricate dies are usually really, really tricky, but it's so, so easy. Um, I'm going to keep those bits because you never know when you might need a little bit of silver. Um, and I'm just going to take a little, take my tweezers, I think. And just, there's just a few bits that just need a quick poke out. They don't come out. You could use your brush. I've got a die brush, but it's just as quick with this to just poke them out with my tweezers. Anything for sharp will do. The end of your scissors or a cocktail stick, anything like that, and that's it. That's all done now. Right, let's get rid of those bits. Now, because on this card, I put silver behind the gold just to give it a bit more color. Wasn't sure I wanted to add gold to this card, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it out of champagne. So it's just a slightly, slightly more goldy color than the silver, but I think it will be okay. So, let's 
slide through so easily. It's a lot easier on my arms than the other one, my big shot was. And again, pops out, maybe not quite as easily this one, maybe this is a slightly thicker card. Um, but it will come out quite easy. It's cut, it's cut really well. It's just because it's such a, a detailed die cut that it just takes a bit more. There we are, it's coming out now. Um, just takes a little bit more to get it out. Anything with straight edges, it's much easier to come out when they've got all these little nooks and crannies. Just makes it just a little bit more tricky. But you get these lovely, lovely wreaths, um, which are just to die for. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Right, let's put that out of the way. And then again, just take my tweezers, pop all those little bits out. There's only about 10, I think. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, tweezers don't want to go through. Let's get that bit out. Ten. I think there are ten. Exactly ten. I thought there were about ten. They're exactly ten. Now, the only other bit of die cutting that we need to do are the numbers. I'm going to use the playful alphabet. So I've got the so these are the numbers from the playful alphabet. I need the two and the five. And I'm going to cut them out in silver. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mount, mount my little bit of silver card onto one of our adhesive sheets, foam adhesive sheets, and that will give it a little bit of dimensional, dimension, dimension, I can't say my words. There we go. So I'm just going to line these up so I know how, so I don't want to waste any of my foam sheets. They're not the cheapest things in the world, so I don't want to have a big bit with silver card on it and then not need it all. So I'm going to cut that there, just to give me a bit of wiggle room. And then I'm going to take my foam sheet. I'm going to lift up one of the edges. I'm going to place this on there. I'll put the backing sheet back down and I can see through it so I can just cut through where that card is. And then I've just got one little bit that's big enough for me to do my numbers, but no bigger, so I haven't wasted anything. I haven't wasted any silver card, haven't wasted any double-sided sheets. And then those, now they'd be a bit more tricky to pass through these because they are, it is quite thick, this foam. So I might pass it through twice or three times just to make sure we get a good cut. But it is fairly easy to do. So line them up, put that down and make sure they don't move pass it through oh it's not actually even that hard i'm going to pass it through another couple of times though just to make sure we get a good cut there and there we go just get rid of my die cutter bring my grid sheet back down again Let's see what's happened here. There we go. So just need to make sure it has cut through to the backing sheet as well. I don't want to take the backing sheet off too quickly because otherwise these will end up, oh, and it has, has taken the backing sheet off there. So I just need to keep that very safely. Still got the die attached to it as well. So I'm just gonna peel, this one has come out better. There we go. That. Oh, the backing sheet wants to come off anyway. There we go. And let's just take the die off this one. Just need to, I'm just going to put them carefully out of the way for the moment so that they're there when I need them. Carefully going to put my dies back on the, metal, on the magnetic sheet so that I don't lose them. Right, there we go. Right, so we've got our two um, reeds ready to go on our card so what do we need right i have got a card blank here it's cut from our basic white the extra thick our thick extra white card so you get a nice sturdy card blank and it measures 10 and a half by 14 and a half so like this it's a roughly half a sheet of a4 
if you're in the UK. So you need to cut a sheet of A4 and it will be, might be slightly more than 14 and a half. I cut mine to 14 and a half just because I think that makes the calculations easier. Um, so that's my card blank. I've then cut a piece of silver card at nine and a half by 13 and a half. So one centimeter smaller so that you get a half a centimeter border all the way around. And then I've cut this half a centimeter smaller again. So it's, um, actually I've got some rough edges. So I'm going to trim that. Um, this is nine by 13. So this just went around by, um, half a centimetre so you get a quarter of a centimetre board around this one so my borders are going to be different sizes I'm just trimming off the smallest amount here because I just had some rough edges I've been using my trimmer and actually I need to give in and put a new blade in my trimmer I've had my trimmer probably well over a year and I haven't put a new blade in it yet but it is getting to the stage where I kind of need to put a new blade in it and I've been delaying it but I think I will give in right okay so that is going to layer on there like so and that is going to layer on there like so okay right before we do that i'm going to take my silver sheet now you get two 12 by 12 sheets of silver foil for 475 making it not the cheapest card in the world so it's two pounds 37 and a half pound p each so each little bit makes a difference so if i'm going to do a book card where all i want to see is the silver border or whatever colour foil I'm using, that border, I am going to um, gut it, is what I call it. So with our trimmer, this is really easy to do. So line your card up at about a centimetre, this side. Take your blade and about a centimetre in, just go up to about a centimetre at the top there. Turn it round. And just do four lines. Just be a little bit careful. You don't want to go too close to the edge. You want to leave a border around your card. So that's the bit that's going to be peeping out and showing. There we go. Now you might find that you haven't quite cut properly. So you can just bring your snips in. And finish trimming there. But this will mean that you've got an extra little bit of silver foil to use for another project and that you haven't wasted it because it's just going to be hidden behind a piece of whisper of, of basic white. So um, so there's your frame that you need and that's the bit that you've got left over so you could cut all sorts of nice things out of there. So just a little tip for you there. Right, okay, so what we need to do is we need to mount our white onto our silver frame. I'm going to be using seal today um, because we're working with foil and I don't tend to think that um, foil works particularly well with wet glues because it's not porous. There we go, get this started. So I'm using seal today. Um, I don't use it often. Um, I prefer using wet glue but because um, I'm working with foil. I thought we'd give this a go today. As you can see, I'm not um, terribly au fait with using it because I don't use it very often. does mean that I need to line this up really carefully before I stick it because otherwise I don't get any, any chance to redo it. It will be stuck once I've stuck it down. So there we go. I'm, gonna line up. I'm lining up this side, the left-hand side, making sure that's straight and then coming over there, there fine and then just want to use my bone fold to get rid of that little crease there there okay it's got a little bit it's got a little bit more there than there so what i might do even though i've measured it i might just come in and do it this way because the um the glue is on that side and it might stick. i'm just going to trim a little bit off there just to even it up a little bit and then this is going to glue onto our card blank so again, a little bit of seal around the edges. It does, make, it does glue really well, this seal, actually. It does, and it is less messy than using Tombow. 
I know some people use use these glue runners all the time. Um, I think because I'm a quiller, first of all, and I need glue for quilling, I don't ever, it's not quite centered. Um, sorry, am I on camera? Um, I'm just trying to line this up really carefully so that it's got an equi equidistant board around the whole thing. There you go. Just takes a little bit more time when you're using seal. If I was doing that with Tombow, now I could wiggle it around a bit. There we go. There's our card blank. And now we've got our two. Well, that looks quite nice, actually. I quite like that um, champagne behind there. Um, OK. Got a little bit of seal on there that I want to get rid of. Just rub it with your finger. The adhesive will come off. Um, OK, so what we're going to do is we're again going to use the seal because this would be very, very, you could use um, Tombow and I've got a fine tip um, glue pot, but actually I'm going to use, and this is what I did on my sample, just a little bit of seal, just still getting out these shapes, there we go. Um, so I'm just going to hold it down and just put a little bit here and there, just a little bit of glue here and there. And it might, you might see some of it through, but I don't think it really matters. And with my other one, it was quite easy to rub that glue off. Stuck to my fingers now. So you don't need to try and cover the whole thing. You just want to get enough, enough adhesive down to stick it in key points. Right, so that should be enough, I think. So again, we're just going to try and centre this. in there that's glued down that's fine that's not a problem and I didn't catch you can see I didn't catch all the edges or things but that's all fine and then the same with the silver one I'm just going to layer this on top if I can get it started there we go You might have a better way of doing this. You could use our adhesive sheets, actually, but I've, again, they're not my favourite thing to use. And probably if I was, I would make a real pig's ear of it if I was using them on camera. I had to occasionally use them. Um, right, and I just want this not to be laying directly on top of the other one. I want it to be poking through. So there we go. And there we go. There, that's our reeds. And it doesn't matter that it overhangs the sides a little bit there. Um, and then we want our numerals. Which the, the, the back layer would stayed on. It would be a lot easier because I just want to line these up carefully. This one has come, the backing has come off. So I'm just going to line this up. I'm going to put that one there. And then take the backing off this one and put that one there. If you don't have the, our, our double-sided um, sheets, you could just use dimensionals on the back here. Would work just as well. There we go. So 25. There we go. Um, now we've got to do a little bit of embossing, heat embossing. So I need a little bit of silver card. Where have I don't put it? Thought I had a little bit of silver card, but it's disappeared. Let me grab a bit. So you don't need extra thick for this. You can just use our regular basic white cardstock because this is not doesn't need any strength to it. I've got Happy and Anniversary from the Well Said stamp set. And I've got somewhere that I haven't got out. A TH Family Party. There it is. It's right over there. Tiny, tiny stamp. Um, so I'm going to take my Versamark, I'm going to take my embossing buddy, um, hoping that they might put the embossing buddy back in the catalogue this time. I think we would all really like it back. It is one of the essential tools, I think. There we go. And then I've got my silver embossing powder here. So I'm just going to stamp happy. Don't need to be careful with the placement because I'm going to cut these out. 
and anniversary and th the th need to fill this up getting a little bit short of silver embossing powder in here there we go obviously didn't reach those edges with my embossing buddy can you see where it's stuck the places where i used it got none stuck at all and where i did didn't use it oh, get my lid back on um, so i'm just going to take a little um i need it off again after all that fuss of putting it back just going to take a little paintbrush and just brush those off wouldn't matter because we're going to cut these out anyway so these specks wouldn't matter but just so that it looks nice and tidy. Give it a blow. And then just bring in my very antiquated heat gun. And just, when you're using a heat gun, don't use it immediately on your, your um, project because it needs to heat up a little bit. Otherwise you're just blowing cold air on it. You might blow some of the powder off. So there we go. What, waiting for the magic there we go that horrible dull grey powder suddenly transformed into beautiful silver right where's my card here we are so um, right okay I'm just going to cut with snips if you want to do this with the trimmer to make sure they're really straight then please go ahead I just tend to do little things like this with my scissors. Doesn't always work, but most times it does, especially when they're very short little words like happy. Just going to straighten that up a bit. There we go. And then you just need a couple of dimensionals on the back there. Oh, that still looks like that's some. Um, I might do it from this side so it's just slightly diagonal down there. There we go. That's better. I do use my eye quite a lot for things. Um, and if you're not quite as confident, you might want to do it a bit more carefully using your trimmer. Um, bear in mind that I've been doing this a long time. I was actually explaining to someone the other day that um, when I got pregnant with my first daughter, which was, she was born in 1993, so she's 27, going on 28 this year. Um, I was working as a peripatetic teacher, a teacher that travelled round, and so each of the schools um, employed me individually and charged the parents for my tuition because I was teaching guitar. Um, and um, so I had to leave at the end of a term. I couldn't leave mid, I couldn't take my maternity leave any closer. Um, plus I was teaching guitar and playing guitar, classical guitar with a huge pregnancy bump is not easy. Um, so anyway, I left in March just before Easter and Jessica was born on the 19th of June. So I had three months of being at home and not knowing what to do with myself. And that was when I started crafting. That was when I started making cards. So I know, I know to almost the date when I first wandered into a craft shop and thought I was in seventh heaven. Um, so 27. So just to say, I've been doing this a long while. If you've only been doing it a little while, um, then you just need to um, realise that it just takes a little while sometimes to build up some skills. Not 27 years though. There we go. Just a few dimensionals. I am using quite a lot of dimensionals on these because I don't want them to, to drop down in the middle when they go through the post. I want them to hold up. Um, there we go. Oh, I know what I've forgotten to do. Put the ribbon on my panel. Oh dear, we're going to have to sort that out now. Hey-ho. Another never a mistake but a chance to innovate moment. Um, there we go. There. I always forget when I've got something to add to my panel to do it before I stick it down um, but we will sort it out not to worry there we go this is just the th I can't cope without it being on there you could just have happy 25 anniversary but I personally need the th 
press one little dimensional will do on there. There we go. Just do that there. There we go. Oh, it's looking good, isn't it? I'm just going to add some um, rhinestones. Just a few little rhinestones around the edges here. Got to be an odd number. I've got five on there. And then we need to sort out our ribbon. Right, the ribbon that I was going to use was this metallic edged ribbon so it's going to go along there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a length that is too long and then I'm going to put a strip of tear and tape on the back of that very carefully to make sure this fits exactly so I'm just going to trim this end off once you've got the tear and tape on there it should stop it from fraying which is great that's not quite straight so I just want to make sure I've got a really straight edge that's better and then I'm going to cut just try and mark it with a little pencil mark just to go about there Let's hope, hey? Much easier if you do this before you glue your panel down. Uh, some people like to wrap their ribbon around the back. Personally, I don't because I don't like the bulk that it gives. But if you want to do that around your panel and glue it on the back, then feel free. I don't like the bulk that that gives. I always cut mine off. And because I'm use, I use double-sided tape, means that the edges are secured and they don't tend to, to fray, she says, as it frays with the getting the double-sided tape off. Let's try it from the middle. Might be easier. There we go. Right, let's try and get this down right first time. There. There we go. And that's just frayed a little bit because I messed about with it there we go and then to make the bow that I made on my card which I call a flat bow I just took a length of the ribbon the ribbon I used on my card before this cut ribbon is called fine art and it's in the spring catalog this is called silver metallic edged um, it's whisper white and it's um, metallic edged as you can see um, again, it's been a really, really useful ribbon. I've coloured it lots of times into different colours. So I'm just working out how big I want my bow to be and then just doing that. I'll measure it in a minute so that I'll tell you exactly how long this piece is. This piece is nine and a half centimetres. So I'm going to fold it in half. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape in the middle there. Bit too big. Remove the backing. Easier said than done. There we go. And then fold in these loops to meet at that center point. And then just a little bit so that I knew that I knew I needed that um, piece of tear and tape. Put that there and then I can just wind a little bit of ribbon around here to make the, the kind of knot in the middle. So this goes around like that. Trim this off goes round like that. So 
not quite centered i'm trying to do it on camera but i think that's okay there we go a little bit of tear and tape on the back of it which will hold those ends down even more securely plus we'll glue it to the other piece of ribbon and then we are done there we are that's our 25th so we've got a 50th and we've got a 25th really pleased with those really like them hope you do too hope you've enjoyed watching my video today if you have please subscribe it would be great um and i hope you will keep um hopping around all the other video links amazing projects for you to see thank you for joining me today hope to see you again soon bye for now bye